Hello everybody, hope it's going well. Uh, one one is, is hearing quite strongly expressed these days frustrations at the uh, curtailment of one's liberties, as one might put it. People are, are frustrated that they're not able to do what they want to do, that they are confined to barracks, as it were, house arrest, is one way of, of putting it, or someone put it like that to me. And I was reading in the book of Philippians the other day, which is often referred to as the epistle of joy. Now remember that, this is the epistle of joy. And the epistle of joy was written by a man who was in prison. A man who says, I am in chains. Do you feel like that? Not able to move around as you would like? Not able to play golf? Not able to go onto the cliff path? Not able to play bridge? Not able to do so many of the things that go to make up our lives? It feels like I'm in prison, some people say. Well, Paul wrote Philippians when he was in prison. He's probably sitting there on the floor with heavy chains on his wrists and around his ankles. So when you think of that, maybe Paul has got something to teach us. The epistle of joy, Philippians. And I think Paul had reached the point where he accepted that there were some things that he could change and there were some things that he knew he could not change. And his life was guided and rooted and anchored in a reality that he knew never change. And he was going to draw his strength, his inspiration, his hope, both for the present and for the future, on not any philosophy, but on a person. And that person was Jesus. He says in chapter 1, for me to live is Christ and to die, well, that's gain. Now, I'm not suggesting that any of us are going to die in the midst of this lockdown, although sadly a few of our members have unfortunately died because of conditions that they had beforehand. But for me to live is Christ. He had found a deeper reality than the circumstances in which he found himself. And as much as he longed to be out there amongst his friends, he knew he couldn't change it, for at least for the time being. And he was going to draw his strength from knowing and loving and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know the prayer of serenity? The prayer of serenity is a prayer that I think we should all pray uh, in these days. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let me say that again. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God be with you. God bless you. We'll chat again soon.